Micro Software. Um, it's a, a filmless and quantifiable TG142 QA solution. It automates analysis of over 30 TG142 recommended QA tasks. And that includes uh, imager uh, QA for both the MV and the KV imagers, so both the, uh, the uh, 2D, uh, 2D panels. Our Cone Beam CT uh, as well, we have a whole host of tests for that, which I'll touch on uh, um, a little more detail as we move along. Uh, MLC QA tests, we have both image-based tests as well as um, log file-based tests. So the image-based tests, uh, like our picket fence test, the log file-based tests, the uh, least speed loss uh, tests across the board. So uh, a couple of the MLC QA tests we offer. Uh, the Stereotactic uh, module, which is basically a uh, automated Winston Lutz uh, for any number of uh, up to uh, eight different angles. So I'll kind of touch on that as well, giving you uh, rotational accuracy and uh, and alignment for uh, for Stereotactic. Uh, we also have radiation light field uh, accuracy tests and a coincidence test, a star shot analysis for couch collimator and gantry. And then we also have an IGRT um, kind of a storehousing uh, uh, trending functionality as well. So that being said, these are some of the uh, the main uh, categories we offer for for QA for in the PIPS Pro software. And I'll touch on a few of those now, uh, just a little more detail. But first, I want to kind of talk about the uh, the database management of the uh, of the system. The nice thing about uh, about PIPS Pro is uh, it's 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 scalable. Um, you can either have a very if you have a very large enterprise uh, um, group uh, similar to say a Genesis Care or something along those lines where you have a whole host of uh, facilities under one umbrella. Uh, you can certainly set up and utilize and connect all those. Or it's also uh, scalable down to that single uh, small uh, group facility that you may have maybe just one or two Linux that you need to do QA on uh, at a, a like a standalone facility or a small. Uh, Community hospital, so that scalability is is an excellent feature of uh, of Pips Pro. Very easy department and user setup uh, within the uh, system manager. You can see here on the lower left, and I'll kind of touch on that a little more detail in a in a few minutes. Uh, it has Citrix server support for uh, for those enterprise wide systems, so you can uh, place a uh, place it on the server and access it uh, accordingly throughout the facility. Centralized data access for that enterprise-wide uh, results and trending, so you can kind of take a look and see what, uh, how all your facilities in a uh, in a group are are working, or even if you have a uh, two Linux uh, single a single site two Linux uh, facility, compare those two Linux results as well. So that uh, that's in uh, Pips Pro also, and then uh, baselines that give uh, quick selects, so you can go directly to your uh, specific tests, and and they're all pre. Uh, pre-set up with those quick selects, and I'll kind of touch on that as well. So setup specifics, um, you know, kind of step through as a system manager, we've got divisions, departments, users, Linux, thresholds, and phantoms. As you step through those, very easy. For example, here's a Linux setup. You can put in your machine ID, your department that it's in, uh, your manufacturer, uh, what model it is, et cetera, what type of MLCs. 60 degree couch, 30 degree couch, uh, you know, whatever, whatever you have there, so that can be set up uh, very easily. Uh, our thresholds are come preloaded with the TG142 uh, um, threshold requirements or recommendations there, and those can be changed, tightened, or loosened uh, as you see fit uh, within your department. So that's not a problem. That's just uh, something you can do uh, very easily. And that's the same with uh, you know the users and the uh, and the divisions as well. So you, you know very easy setup for for the uh, system manager. Uh, nice thing too, uh, visual uh, what we call a QA results dashboard. When you open up Pips Pro, this will pop up. It shows uh, the overview of your last analysis results uh, and a pass fail and alert results in the green, yellow, red um, square, triangle, stop sign or circle. Um, results there so you can kind of quick visual quick visual uh, um, result uh, for the last test you've done so it gives you that quick and easy review um, now just kind of getting into some of the specific tests uh, the planar imaging for for MV and KV we utilize a couple different phantoms we've got our uh, MV uh, based QC3 phantom and our KV based uh, 
um, QCKV Phantom, as you can see on the lower left. Uh, the um, Phantom image and then a flood field is taken very, very quickly and very easily. Those are brought in automatically into uh, um, PIPS Pro and the uh, regions of interest in the uh, in the phantom are automatically uh, found and calculated for you and gives you the results there a, a mtf curve as well as color-coded uh, results for your f50 f30 f40 uh, resolution your uniformity your noise and your contrast to noise all uh, all visually you can see on this particular page uh, that the green results show that the, all these uh, results are passing if say uniformity was uh, was under a, a caution you'd get a yellow or if it failed uh, for example they would show a red there as well so you know everything is color coded for your uh, your results for easy uh, pickup also full uh, capability of uh, adding trending um, uh, reports and uh, an export of the data to a csv file as well so that's all uh, in the functionality uh, of pips pro also uh, for the Combeam CT uh, QA, we actually utilize uh, the uh, pre-existing uh, CAT fan that uh, if you have a Combeam CT on your system, either either Varian or Electa, uh, you will have a, a CAT fan that's supplied by either one of those two companies, and we utilize that for our uh, analysis of the Combeam CT. You can see we do uh, tests for uh, uniformity of noise, Hounsfield unit uh, constancy, geometric distortion, slice thickness, uh, low contrast visibility and detectability as well. And again, those results are all color coded. You get uh, upon initial um, initial analysis, you get this quick uh, quick view uh, screen here, the over the CT results overview. But you can click on any one of these specific uh, line line items here, any of these rows, and it will take you into a more uh, uh, detailed look at what those particular tests are. For here, you can see the geometric distortion results or your slice thickness results uh, for this particular slice of the uh, phantom. So that's all part of that uh, component tree as well. Uh, as we move into uh, move into the uh, least speed QA tests, these are our log file based uh, tests for uh, travel speed, the least speed loss, uh, the segmented uh, IMRT step and shoot or moving window uh, IMRT as well, as well as leaf position repeat, uh, repeatability. Um, nice thing about our system is we don't do an average across the open field. Uh, um, we actually report on leaf speed loss of every individual leaf in the system. And you can kind of see that in the results. Uh, and I'll kind of touch on that as well as we move into the software. I want to give a couple of examples uh, to, to show you. But you can kind of see the, um, the, uh, the leaf speed loss for each individual leaf. You can hover over those leaves and it will give you the uh, report on that individual leaf speed loss as well. And then the upper right, or I'm sorry, upper left corner of that page, uh, it kind of shows you what I call the uh, the worst uh, uh, 10 culprits, if you will, for, for leaf speed loss. Uh, and typically, you know, you can see here there, they typically are on the outside edges because those leaves don't uh, typically get used as much. So you might see a little more speed loss on the outer edges uh, due to um, stickiness, lubrication uh, um, materials uh, sticking to the leaves, things like that. So kind of touch on that as we move along as well. Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> Jumped ahead a little bit. Uh, MLC test, our image-based test, you can see here we've got our picket fence test, we've got leaf position accuracy, leaf transmission test, um, and uh, you know, the multi-port or picket fence test results show as such. You've got the image here, the software will find those, uh, those leaf edges and then report on those both on the A bank and the B bank or the left bank and the right bank uh, accordingly and give those, um, those results of, uh, of Leaf edges being out of position uh, throughout the uh, throughout the field. Radiation light field coincidence. Uh, we've got a phantom, our FC2 phantom, which has a uh, ability of of detecting uh, either 10 by 10 or 15 by 15 field. Has a uh, built-in uh, marker for ducials at the corners for a 10 by 10 field and a 15 by 15 field. It will localize onto those uh, phantom uh, ducials know where the uh, the light field should be set and find that radiation edge and do a comparison. The results are uh, presented to you as you see here, um, basically showing you a uh, radiation uh, 
light field displacement in the X and Y uh, direction, as well as a uh, center crosshair displacement. We have a little uh, piece of, um, of uh, acrylic that goes on top that uh, has a fiducial in it to show the uh, to line up to the center to line up to the center um, of your uh, of your crosshair and report on that as well. Radiation, I'm sorry, star shot analysis. Uh, the star shot analysis can be done with either EPID or film. Obviously, for gantry, couch, and collimator tests, you can't use the EPID for all those because of geometries. So where film is required, you can utilize film. And then it's just a one quick one click uh, one click analysis. <laughs> one click quick analysis. How's that? Um, and uh, basically, you just have to click on the center of the uh, of the phantom. Doesn't have to be right in the center. Just anywhere in the uh, the bright spot. And um, you will uh, go, and then it will automatically, once that's clicked on, it will automatically calculate those results for you. And um, from there, it will uh, give you the, uh, basically the smallest diameter circle that incorporates all the rays of the, uh, of the um, star shot, which is how, uh, how the um, TG142 is, is a uh, um, recommended results for that uh, specific test uh, that utilizing the smallest diameter circle. Uh, Winston Lutz uh, automated uh, tests for stereotactic. Um, you can do either MLC or cone-based QA, uh, calculates uh, optimal 3D shifts for, for that while finding um, you know, your 2D, basically your 2D uh, um, variations in uh, the eight different uh, uh, positions that we that are recommended for uh, TG142. You don't have to do all eight. You can do as few as two, but obviously the more uh, more angles for the gantry and couch you have, the better the results will be. So we do recommend eight. Um, you can see here the uh, this is a uh, MLC based. The uh, the uh, yellow uh, yellow crosshair notes the found center of the uh, of the ball marker. The green outer square rec uh, recognizes the um, the outer edge of the radiation field, and then the green uh, the green crosshair rec recognizes the uh, the center of the uh, the radiation field. So those two are compared. Uh, those two crosshairs are compared accordingly, and you're given the um, the shifts in 2D, and then those 2D um, uh, results are are calculated uh, to give you those 3D optimal shifts in the X, Y, and Z direction, which you can see on the left for those 3D calculations. Nice thing too, it will utilize just about any uh, Winston Lutz phantom out there. We've got a few different phantoms. We've got our pointer phantom, which you can see here. Uh, we've also got a, uh, a Winston Lutz cube that can be utilized also. So uh, really any, uh, any kind of um, ball marker uh, can be uh, can be uh, utilized for this test, even a, a BB on a stick. <laughs> so anyway, that's uh, for the Winston Lutz test. And then uh, lastly, we've got, <clears throat> excuse me, we've got our uh, IGRT module. And this is basically kind of, uh, you check your, um, your daily uh, um, X, Y, and Z deviations with something like our Mimi Phantom, uh, which we offer. Um, and given those deviations, uh, you can enter those in on a daily basis in your X, Y, and Z uh, deviations. It'll do your 2D, 2D matching, your 3D, 3D matching as well. And then you can uh, trend and report on those accordingly. So uh, you'll see that uh, you, have a, you can build a trend line uh, for, uh, for your daily uh, positioning checks for your, uh, your 2D, uh, 2D matching for your KV and MV and your 3D uh, matching for your uh, cone beam as well. So I'm just going to pop into the software real quick. I'm just going to run through a couple of things just to kind of show you how easy some of the navigation is, things like that. I don't want to keep you guys here too long. Uh, we usually try to wrap these up in 25 minutes to a half an hour, but uh, um, let's jump into the software. So as I mentioned, uh, the QA dashboard, when you open up PIPS Pro, this will pop up uh, um, and as soon as you log in. And basically, like I said, it shows you the results for your last uh, last tests uh, accordingly. You know, this one um, is showing you the uh, the results for your light field, your travel speed, uh, for your leaf, your position accuracy. So quite a whole host of tests here. I can hide that dashboard. Um, 
touch on that system manager. Uh, as I mentioned, you can put different things in accordingly. You've got your divisions. So if you have a large overarching group, you can enter that in your specific departments uh, accordingly as well. Um, just enter that in and that uh, stores in the uh, database as well. Your individual users, you can set people up uh, as a, uh, a, what we call a super user administrator that gives you access to, you know, change the thresholds of the uh, of the tests, gives you the ability to add, uh, add uh, test um, Linux and, and things like that. Uh, there's a basic level of, uh, of um, security, which basically gives you the only the ability to perform the tests and record the results, things like that. You can't change anything within the uh, within the system manager if you've got basic uh, basic rights. So that's uh, that's the user interface. The Linux one I kind of touched on already um, for uh, the type of Linux uh, you have set up, things like that. What uh, what uh, images you have, whether the college is 3D or 60, etc. Thresholds, as I mentioned, uh, are set up uh, from. Uh, from the get-go with the TG142 recommendations, but those can be tightened or loosened as you see fit. And then also our phantoms. Uh, one nice thing about our phantoms, our QCKV and our QC3 phantom, they come calibrated uh, with specific frequencies from the from the factory. So each individual uh, phantom has a, a specific frequency uh, uh, calibration set to it. So you can do that accordingly as well. That's a system manager. Um, you can go ahead here and you can go in and pick any of the machines you have. The active machine always shows up in the upper uh, um, toolbar up top. So uh, my applications here, I can go into my imager QA. I'm just going to kind of maybe uh, grab today. You can see here's the quick selects I've got set up. I've got a uh, um, QC3 single, which is a uh, the MV test, uh, a QC3 dual. The single difference there is a single uses a, uh, a phantom image and a flood field. The dual uses two uh, two uh, phantom images, a few, uh, like a minute apart or so, um, and then it just calculates against differences there for your uh, for your uniformity and your noise things like that. Um, and then the Cat Fan 504. So I'm going to just kind of you know the um, the Cat Fan 504 test. I'm going to jump into that. Uh, I'm going to load up my uh, my images. It's going to take a second because there's like uh, 50, 64 images, I think, on the uh, on the CT um, set. But uh, once you bring that in, um, you know, the uh, the Catman 504, you, you bring the images in and the uh, images will calculate automatically um, once it uh, once it localizes on those images. And I'm not sure. I think I've got too many things open today. It's taking a little longer than normal. Usually it's uh, it's pretty quick. Not sure what the uh, what the holdup is today. I should have shut some things down. I think. Let me uh, take a quick peek while it's loading. There we go. Uh, I've got a couple of questions. So, um, real quick, uh, what phantom is used for the MLC test? Uh, we don't use any phantom actually. We do have a phantom that we use for previous versions that is still available and can be used, but otherwise you can use a Graticule tray for the uh, for the MLC test. Um, I'm not sure about that. I've got to double check on the triple F uh, questions. There's tri triple F um, rad light field. Uh, maybe um, you can send me an email after the fact and we can kind of touch on that a little uh, more in depth. But let me jump back to um, my uh, my images here. So I get my Varian. Uh, I'm going to open those up. It'll automatically run the calculation on the uh, the Combeam CT uh, uh, cat fan. And you'll see here as these this will pop up your overview here. The overview um, shows you pass fail uh, red and so obviously we got some failures here and some passing. You can go ahead and click on any of these uh, tests here. We'll bring up uh, for here example your Hounsfield uh, unit constancy, and that looks at the uh, the eight uh, different density plugs in the Phantom. You've got your expected materials for your air, your PMP, your polystyrene air, acrylic, Delrin, Teflon. And those are all known and expected uh, results. Then you get your uh, your measured Hounsfield units, as you can see here, showing you again pass fail or caution as uh, as uh, the results uh, dictate. Uh, if I want to go back, I can kind of click on, I'm going to move my uh, window here. You can't see that, but my 
toolbar is there for the uh, webinar. Um, if I want to look at maybe my uh, my geometric distortion or my slice thickness, I can go to that. Um, and that you know same same slice of the phantom, but it's just different. Uh, it's different um, targets. So we've got the line bar. I'm sorry, the uh, step wedges embedded here, showing you for slice thickness, and then the um, geometric distortion materials as well for the um, for these plugs as well for circular uh, checks. Again, these are all passing. Low contrast visibility didn't do so well. Uh, we've got uh, failure there, but um, you can kind of see the different test uh, uh, results for the uh, for the Phantom. Close that. Maybe uh, show the uh, this theory tactic uh, module as well. So I can go ahead and uh, you'll see that it automatically brings up the uh, um, the theory tactic. Uh, uh, these are this is a cone based uh, auto load uh, system for the uh, theory tactic. The nice thing about the software is once you once you direct your uh, your test result uh, uh, looking for the specific images, it will automatically remember that and go right to that uh, directory. So all I need to do is select those and open them, and we'll run through the uh, run through the, the um, calculation automatically for the 2D and the uh, in the in-plane and cross-plane um, calculation for the various angles. It shows you the angles here in these little windows. It gives you the results here in your um, in your deviations of your U and your in-plane and cross-plane. Those eight results are all calculated, and they give you the optimal shifts as you can see here. So this this one turned out uh, pretty well, even though we had a yellow here. The overall um, 3D calculation uh, is very uh, very small in sub millimeter, so you probably wouldn't even uh, shift this one accordingly because that sub millimeter is pretty pretty tough to adjust to in the uh, in this software, or I'm sorry, in the um, on the on the Linux couch itself. So. So there's just a few examples of, uh, of what we've got. Uh, like I said, we've got the um, kind of jump back to my PowerPoint. Uh, so uh, we also, one thing I have to mention too, is we also have uh, software for, uh, it's basically our QA database um, management software called QA, uh, um, QA Pilot. And we have a QA Fusion connection, which basically is the combination of the PIPS Pro software and that QA Pilot uh, management software. So we've got automatic uh, connectivity. It will upload your uh, your results from the uh, from the dashboard right to QA Pilot. Then we have a QA Pilot portal you'll see here. This is our dashboard, and you can choose either the regular uh, dashboard or the QA Pilot portal. And then the uh, software will automatically uh, upload all the results to QA Pilot, and from QA Pilot, it will it will host uh, all that data in in the cloud, uh, all your result data. You can then uh, trend, and you can uh, report, and and um, storehouse all that uh, uh, that data in QA Pilot. Um, keep an eye out on our website uh, if you'd like to see um, QA Pilot in more in depth, because we do like today with our webinar for Pips Pro, we do also offer um, offer uh, uh, webinars on QA Pilot as well. I'm not sure what the schedule is, but like I said, if you check the webinar or the webinar schedule where you found this webinar, you'll see one for uh, for QA Pilot most likely. But anyway, so you can go ahead and see those uh, those results there um, for the uh, for QA Pilot. Uh, here's some result information uh, for reporting as well. So here's a here's another report for. Uh, for QA Pilot uh, that they can, uh, you mentioned there, uh, directly push from PIPS Pro into QA Pilot. Uh, QA Pilot gives you the the ability to customize uh, test uh, reporting uh, within the within the software, so you can do that as well. Um, now, just kind of touching on some of the uh, PIPS Pro advantages that I kind of touched on uh, um, in our webinar here. Uh, it provides all quantifiable and repeatable results. Uh, it's all quantifiable, nothing uh, quality quality uh, base it's it's actual numbers and very repeatable so it makes it much easier to uh, become compliant uh, with TG142 uh, centralized database is uh, scalable for specific needs from that large large uh, group uh, um, setting to the smallest individual uh, standalone clinics the results dashboards give you that single view for the most recent results uh, and that can be uh, 
uploaded directly into uh, QA Pilot should you uh, choose our QA Fusion solution. Again, everything is quantifiable uh, for every test with our Precision Phantoms. Uh, the intuitive user interface for each component, very easy, uh, you know, one click or no click uh, calculation for uh, for each test. Uh, smart software that automatically locate, locally, locates on uh, fiducials in the uh, in the phantoms and field edges of phantoms, things like that. So it gives you uh, results with less mouse clicks, uh, very automated uh, system overall. And again, over 30 TG142 tests in one package, uh, and they're automatically can be uploaded into QA Pilot uh, as well. So that's um, that's my presentation today for uh, for Pips Pro. If uh, if you want to see a little more in depth and kind of maybe run through some of uh, some of the additional tests that I didn't necessarily touch on within the software, feel free to uh, to contact us uh, via the website standardengine.com. Uh, you can also uh, jump into uh, sales at standardimaging.com and they will uh, direct your um, your inquiry to the uh, specific uh, representative and they can get in touch with me and we can set something up for a more in-depth uh, presentation. Uh, other than that, um, I thank you for your time. Let me take a look and see if there's other questions here. Um, let's see. So I've got uh, one question. Does the software work with other vendors' um, uh, phantoms? So it does only work uh, mostly with our with our phantoms. There are a couple of exceptions, uh, the leads, phantom, uh, uh, things like that we can utilize. But uh, the uh, the phantoms are dedicated with the exception of you know, the QA vendor uh, phantom, the, the uh, uh, cat fan from Phantom Laboratories is utilized as well. Um, the uh, phantom tests are you doing for CT for uh, planning QA checks? So that um, we that would actually be uh, for for planning QA check and the CT. Um, the R's are more geometric tests and the uh, the uh, imaging capabilities as far as planning QA. Uh, we do have a uh, from from our newly acquired IMT uh, company a CT sim phantom. Um, but honestly, I, it's so new, I have not had a chance to really dig into that yet. But it's something we can certainly uh, talk about offline. If you want to get in touch with me, I can get in touch with, uh, I can get you in touch with the person who uh, is product manager for uh, for the uh, CT SimCheck Phantom, and we can uh, discuss that. Um, does Pips Pro uh, work with Electa? Yes, it does. It, uh, you know, any of the tests that I've got. Uh, I've got uh, that I showed today also work with Electa, even though my examples there were for uh, for a variant uh, Linac. Um, actually, the last release, uh, version 5.7, we did an update specific uh, to, especially the cat fan, um, finding those key slices and, and reporting uh, uh, more uh, um, economically, if you will, I guess is a, maybe, a, maybe a good word for it uh, on Electa specifically. So, you know, we're always keeping an eye on things as far as changes from variant Electa so we can kind of update to our, uh, we can update to our uh, um, software to make sure that they are still working with, uh, you know, with um, variant Electa. We also do some tests specific for CyberKnife for, uh, for the um, uh, KV tests, things like that. So, yeah, so it, it does definitely work with uh, with the multitude of uh, of vendors. And it looks like that is it for questions. Um, oh, wait a minute. I do have one more, it looks like. Not quite sure. It's how many versions do you have of the software? Um, there's, there's basically, there's, there's only two versions of the software. There's the, uh, the, the um, comprehensive version, which is everything I've shown you today, and then we also have a standalone version of the, uh, the stereotactic module. So the stereotactic module, the automated Winston Lutz test, that can be purchased as a separate module. But other than that, uh, there's only one, and it includes, uh, it includes everything. So. Uh, one thing we're we're working on, uh, as I mentioned, with the um, with the uh, acquisition of IMT and their Phantoms, we are looking to incorporate some of their uh, 
their software functionality for their phantoms into uh, pips pro as well so we just started uh, kind of uh, delving into that but those will be eventually added as well uh, does the system require some special computer to run not really the um, the the uh, specs for the computer are actually pretty low by today's standards so um, you know, the obviously the uh, the the imaging uh, components of things. You know, since we're only transferring images, it's not it's not image uh, processing heavy. Uh, we're just we're we're um, doing QA on existing images from other uh, other systems. You know, the um, the, uh, the the CVCT and the EPID and the KV imager on the uh, on the Linac. So uh, it, it's not a big resource hog, uh, if you will. Um, as far as the software goes, um, and uh, if you if you want, uh, you can feel free again to uh, to email us, and uh, um, I can get you the uh, specs for the uh, specific um, requirements for the computer. Uh, they should be also available on the website under the Pips Pro um, category, uh, um, so you can kind of check there as well. But I'd be happy to uh, to send you the uh, required specs for uh, for the PC as well. So some good questions today. Thank you very much. I appreciate those. Uh, usually, I don't get a lot of uh, I don't get a lot of questions, so um, it's nice to uh, nice to see that uh, I'm I'm being listened to. I guess. <laughs> uh, but other than that, I uh, I appreciate your time. Uh, again, if you have any questions, uh, you can contact us directly uh, on the contact page of our standardimaging.com website, and uh, feel free to email us sales at standardimaging.com if you have other questions. Thank you very much for your time. I hope everybody has a great day or a good evening, depending on where you're located.